Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! All this week we'll be looking at what voting in or out in the EU referendum could mean. With mobile roaming charges falling substantially recently and being scrapped within the EU altogether next year, would leaving the EU have any impact on how much we'd spend making calls and using data abroad? Our technology correspondent Rory Kethlin Jones has been finding out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board this Eagle Star to Paris. Take a trip abroad and there's one thing besides your passport you're almost bound to pack. Yes, your mobile phone. But across the channel, it'll soon be warning you about the cost of using it abroad. It's called roaming. And there's always the worry that it could result in some shocking bills when you get home. I'm just going to turn this off, actually. You just reminded me. You just reminded me to turn off my data. Yeah. Hang on. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's expensive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really expensive. But for years now, the European Union has been acting to bring down the cost of roaming, capping the amount mobile phone firms can charge you to call, text or use data when you're away. The cost of roaming may have come down, but if, like me, you use a lot of data, you can still see the bills mount up. But next year, that should change. Anyone travelling from Britain to another EU country and anyone coming here from across the EU will find that roaming charges have been abolished completely. But what happens if Britain decides to say goodbye to Europe? It could be a little bit more, uh, more expensive, yes, I believe that. But I don't think people would stop coming to the UK because of that, no. There are lots of other good reasons for the Britons to stay in the EU, EU but not for mobile roaming charges. The mobile phone companies seemed reluctant to discuss the implications of a Brexit. Even their statements said little. EE said EU membership meant they'd been able to offer customers lower charges. O2 said it was too early to predict what would happen to roaming charges if we left. Vodafone said it would always do what's right for our customers. And 3 said no comment. Kester Mann watches the mobile industry closely. What does he think will happen? Obviously, uh, UK operators would no longer be accountable to roaming reg regulation from the European Union. And so, in the long term, we may start to see roaming prices creep back up again. I think that the reality is that in a market as competitive as the UK, this is extremely unlikely. Lower roaming charges is one area where the EU's been in tune with consumers. Even if Britain left, it seems unlikely any government would want to see them rise again. Rory Catherine jones BBC News. As part of our series talking to people about how they'll vote in the EU referendum and what's important to them, tonight it's the turn of Samuel Gittings, a cricket groundsman in Sheffield. My name is Samuel Gittings. I'm age 76. I've been working here at Sheffield Caribbean Sports Club for uh, almost 36 years. I'm undecided one way or the other, because if you listen to the debates, some saying it'd be good if we leave, others saying it'd be better if we stay. At present, I'm not sure which way uh, or who to really believe. Immigration has always been an issue. Yes, we got a lot of skills here, but we don't have all the skills for everything. Even if we leave, I don't think that we will close the borders to prevent other Europeans from coming in. The positive is that we can trade easier with the other European countries. We help them, they help us. For defence, we join with America more often than we join with the other European countries. So I can't see staying in Europe or leaving Europe is going to make any difference with our defence. It is an important decision. So you weigh up all the facts, all the benefits, the advantages, disadvantages, then you make a decision and you go to the ballot box. That was cricket groundsman Samuel Gittings there with his views on voting in the EU referendum. I've been 